Welcome to Electron Lime. Here's the second theorem of Pappus Goldinus. In this case, it says that the volume of a body formed by rotating an area about an axis is equal to the area multiplied by the distance covered by the centroid during the rotation. Here we have an area. Here's the centroid of the area. We're going to rotate that about the x-axis. The object that we end up with will look like this. Do it again here, like so, and then here, this of course you can see, it's behind, and that would be behind like that. All right, and then if we then continue to rotate this area through, then we get something that looks like this, and like that, and well, not quite what I wanted to look like, but I think we have a pretty good idea if we now Raise that and raise that. We now can see that this is kind of like a, a cylinder, a hollow cylinder. The distance from the centroid to the axis of rotation, this distance right here, is the y-coordinate of the centroid, of the position or the coordinates of the centroid. Now what we're going to do is we want to find the volume of this. The volume is equal to question mark. And according to Pappus Goldinus' theorem, it says that the volume is equal to the area multiplied, so we're going to take the area and we multiply that times the distance covered by the centroid. The centroid will travel this distance, the centroid will go around like this and then around back like that. It will make a circular path. The length of a circle is 2 pi times the radius, so we'll multiply this times 2 pi and the radius in this case will be the y-coordinate of the centroid of that area. So we multiply that times the y coordinate of the centroid. And that is all we need to find the volume of this hollowed out cylinder. Very, very nice technique. Again, we can use that because of the concept of the centroid and how it affects the, uh, the calculation. Simply the area of the object right here and 2 pi r, which is 2 pi times the y coordinate of the centroid as we rotate around the x-axis. That's all we need to do. Now we will we'll do some examples of this so it becomes clear how nice a technique that is to use. In some cases it may not be easy because we still need to find the area which may not be easy to find. But once we have the area and we know the coordinates of the centroid then it's easier to find the volume of the object. And that's how it's done.